when you dismantle the nuclear weapon, right. what, what do you do with all that nuclear weapon? <laughs> Um, some of it goes. Some of it goes to South Carolina, uh, and uh, right now we blend it down. Uh, depending on whether it's uh, highly enriched uranium or plutonium, we blend it down. Uh, for those of you from Nevada, anybody here from Nevada? No, you have a mountain for you. Uh, we're not going to put the, the depository in. We're going to have dry storage in Yucca Mountain. We're not going to do that. We're looking at now an international consortium, including Russia, to do that. Um, that's the the dirty little secret about. Nuclear weapons is that the waste is here forever. You mentioned Fukushima, uh, slightly off topic, but a concern, a great concern. I saw a video a few weeks ago uh, showing people, women, children in Fukushima saying, we're not adequately protected. There's too much radiation here. We want our government to get us out of here. Um, is the U.S. State Department looking at that situation? Very concerned about what I saw about their concerns about the food, the irradiated yeah. food and all that. Yeah. Um, there are a number of different, there's, there's certainly the, the National Atomic Energy uh, folks that are, that are looking at, from the Department of Energy, looking at how to make that, is that area recoverable, is the word? Are, they, are people going to be able to come back? What is the, uh, is this like Chernobyl where it's going to basically be a place where people don't visit, can't live for many, many decades? I don't think we have an answer to that yet. Um, we, of course, have provided a tremendous amount of aid to the Japanese people and to the Japanese government. Uh, but we do engage with them every day to make sure that, first and foremost, what they're telling us is representative of the facts, um, that their uh, cultural issues of, of you know, not wanting to deliver bad news and things like that have gone past, and that we are actually getting facts that we can help and, and support. Um, the, good, the good measures to make sure that people are safe and secure, they're getting back to their, their lifestyles. And, and kind of, can people be repatriated or can't they? And if they can't, what's being done to make more permanent the situation that they're in, less of a situation where they're living in a, in a gymnasium, but more getting into housing. Um, first and, of all, could you briefly touch on the points of the opposition? Uh, to the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. And then what they said in 1999 was that we don't know enough about the stockpile and we don't know enough about what might happen uh, and that there are people that say that the only way we will know it is if we throw it up in the South Pacific or in Nevada. And in the intervening time, we have found out that that's not true. We found out that we have a thousand tests, we have a tremendous amount of data, but we can simulate tests using lasers and and very fast computers. Uh, that gives us a sense for what, what's happening. If they tell me that, you know, if they've got a problem with something, uh, some of these things that they have problems with or they proceed to have problems with don't require testing to fix them. Tensile strength, you don't have to blow something up to figure out how strong it is, you can just kind of pull. Um, the half-life of plutonium, somebody else did that study five years ago and found out that we were enormously conservative in the 50s and 60s when we were building these weapons and actually it's three or four times the number that we thought it was. So we can extend the life of plutonium way, way out to the future. Uh, the volatility of different things like tritium and those are things that are done in labs with people with white coats on and they, we do everything to protect them and make them safe but the truth is that you don't need to blow something up to find that out. The only thing you need to blow something up usually to find out is if it goes bang. We know the weapons are safe. Every year, the lab directors, the head of the National Nuclear Security Administration, and the President of the United States say that they're safe. Every, the next day, they start to look to make sure that the pre previous 365 days' work is still the position that we're in, that they're safe and reliable and effective, and that we can use them if we choose. Uh, we want people to understand that this president has made clear that we will only have nuclear weapons for as long as other states do and as long as they are required uh, for our security. And our ambition is to get rid of them. Those conditions don't exist right now. We're, we're going to be making the public case. We have this National Academies of Science study. I previewed it. It, it makes a very strong scientific-based scientific case that we don't need to test, that there is a tremendous amount of investment in other alternatives uh, to find out if we have a safe and reliable and effective stockpile without going boom someplace. Uh, and that we are anxious to do that. And you know, if you've got five smart people in a room and said to them, what about the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty? 
And what about the United States, that we can still test nuclear weapons? They'd say, you're nuts. We're, you don't test nuclear weapons. Because, of course, we don't. We haven't for 20 years. But we haven't gone that extra step to get the benefits of an international treaty so that we can hold people that are willing to test accountable. So we're living under the treaty without the benefits of the treaty. That sounds crazy to me because every day that we don't test, that every day that we don't test, that we don't ratify the treaty, is, the, is a day that somebody else can. And shame on us to have the ability to hold them accountable within our grasp, but to help politics get in the way. Talking about the UN, and this may be not as a pressing issue, but um, I should say but again, but um, <laughs> as far as nuclear power, um, Republicans in Washington State call it the clean energy. I don't. And especially uh, looking at the worldwide, I believe um, Europe has a higher standard than U.S., and U.S. has a higher standard than uh, China. And as we know, China is looking for cheap fuel anywhere and everywhere. At some point, will we be able to ask China to increase their safety le levels, even if it may not be right at the, the Pacific Ocean? If That's a very, very good question. You know, I thought we were having a nuclear power renaissance in the United States until Fukushima happened. You know, if you, if you look at um, environmental uh, optimism, you know, how do we keep our air clean? How do we keep our water clean? How do we provide uh, cheap electricity for ourselves? How do we keep jobs, do all those things that we know we have to do all at the same time? Um, obviously, we need a blended solution. And I believe that civilian nuclear power is a blended solution. Um, you have to obviously be very careful about where you cite the, the, uh, the nuclear power plant. And you want to know that you have the highest standards. The Chinese are starting to look at getting into that business. Um, their standards, I would say, are not demonstrably lower than ours. The biggest problem we have with China is that they're burning coal all the time. But Fukushima has sent <coughs> shockwaves through the system, as you know. Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany, pulled the plug in about five minutes. Uh, they're going to wind down all of their nuclear power plants. Um, and, but the French, uh, the French are up. The French are actually going to burn more. So it depends on where you are and what, what your culture is used to. Uh, but for us, I think that there's a long way to go for the American people to embrace nuclear power, uh, especially in the short term. But um, I think it is a component of uh, many other elements that get us cleaner and our cleaner water and less expensive uh, sources of power that are uh, you know, not from the Middle East.